Hi guys. So guess what I'm gonna tackle? These sweet potatoes. See that? Yeah, chop that sucker up. I think I'm gonna can them this year, at least the majority of them. Maybe ones that are nice individual size. I'll keep for baked sweet potatoes or sweet potato fries, fun things like that. But I'm thinking as much as I'm loving my canned white potatoes and how convenient it is to use them, I really think I'm going to enjoy just canned sweet potatoes, not like in a syrup or anything. And then I'll have them like pre-cooked and ready to go for come Thanksgiving time and it's time for sweet potato casserole. And I know this is going to be a job, so I want to get started on it today. It's the end of the work week. I just wrapped up work, so I'm at least going to get cleaning them and peeling them. I don't know if I'll get to canning them this evening because I still need to make dinner, of course, and stuff like that. I'm doing a lot more of that, guys. I think I cooked like three dinners this week. <laughs> if, you're not, if you're not familiar with our channel and me, Todd typically does most of the cooking, but I've made, what did I make? Monday night, I made a burrito casserole. Oh, that was so good. Tuesday night, I made shrimp tacos, but they were like press grilled on the cast iron flat iron. Oh, they were so good. Tonight, I'm making stir fry with some leftover cabbage from when I made my coleslaw. So I'm just like in this all out mood. One of these days, I think I'm feeling very carby. <laughs> so which is why I'm processing sweet potatoes. Like we don't eat a ton of carbs. I would love to, don't get me wrong. We just try not to, but I think it's fall. And all I'm thinking about are things like pumpkin bread, making homemade pasta and homemade breads again, and cookies and cinnamon rolls. <laughs> so maybe doing something healthy with sweet potatoes will temper that for a little bit. So I'm not sure what I'll show you. I've got a lot to process and get through today. Um, but yeah, I'll at least show you the canning process. So I'll see you guys over somewhere else in the kitchen. So I'm just cleaning up my kitchen a little bit before I get started. I mentioned that in the last canning video that I just like to have a really clean kitchen before I get started. What I was doing was rinsing my, Todd used my hour <laughs> paper towels to blot off our steak last night before he grilled it. And so I had seasoning and everything on it. But these are reusable bamboo paper towels. And I've had these for, I mean, they've been washed I don't know how many times. I think that they say that they're good for 20 uses, but I'm quite sure I've used them longer than that. So I just give them a good washing if they have like grease or things like that on it. And I'll show you how I keep them. When they come out of the wash, I just you know, kind of fold them up, roll them up and stick them underneath the sink. So if you're interested in lowering your footprint or how much you're having to buy and everything, this is a great sustainable, reusable resource. And I'll link them down in the description for you if you're interested. And if any of you are still struggling cooking with cast iron, this is proof. You saw how fast I washed this. I cooked fried onions, green peppers in it, baked potatoes, cheese, butter, and then baked it in the oven. And it's like a quick swish and it's clean. So now I'm ready. Okay, so I picked out two varieties of, not two varieties, but two specific styles of resulting sweet potatoes to work with for my canning. Um, a lot of them are kind of like the long, skinny, maybe one and a half inch in diameter size ones. And then the ones at the bottom, see if I can buy them.
The ones at the bottom are the big, big mammer jammers that would be way more than just like a single serving if I wanted to bake them. They're just really huge and would probably benefit from being canned. So that's what we're gonna work with. Maybe we'll get, let's aim for a canner load of at least five quarts and two pints. We'll see how far we get. I might end up with more than seven jars worth. It looks like more now that it's in my 22 quart bowl. So we're gonna head over here, get them processed. I am getting going on dinner tonight. It is a chicken fried rice. And so I'll be in and out while I'm doing this. Okay, I got my rice boiling, I'm good to go. Ooh, I'm far away. That better? Okay, so I forgot, I was thinking I was just gonna be able to peel, chop, put in my pot, but because this is only my second time canning any type of potato, I was reminded to myself that I do need to um, blanch these for three minutes before I use them. So I'm gonna go ahead and get as much of this prep work done while I'm cooking up that dinner behind me. And I'll probably bring you guys back when they're all in the pot blanching and then we'll go through the canning process. I think I can get this done tonight. Might be late, but just because potatoes have to can so long. Oh, one thing I didn't say at the beginning of these videos, I harvested these potatoes, it'll be three weeks tomorrow ago. So three weeks ago and they've been curing. I definitely do not do the recommended curing process just because I don't have the environment here in Michigan to do that. You're supposed to do it at 80 degrees, 80 degrees and I think if I remember right, like 90% humidity. <laughs> We definitely do not have that conditions this time of year here. So, but I'll let you know that that has never um, hindered how well my potatoes store or how sweet they are. Um, now, maybe I'm missing out on something and they would be even sweeter if they cured at that temperature, but I haven't found that at least it affected um, what I'm expecting or um, storage. So downstairs in my basement today, I am prepping this year's sweet potatoes. I still have sweet potatoes in the basement that are perfectly fine from last year. So if you're looking to grow a sweet potato or a potato, sweet potatoes are going to far better preserve for you than a regular potato would. Man, I just said, dang it, really mm. took like the tip Oh, close your ears if you're nauseous. Slicing my sweet potatoes and caught the tip of my fingertip and it is so bad and I have like 10 potatoes left. <laughs> so I got it wrapped up in one of those <laughs> reusable bamboo towels. <laughs> but I'm gonna try to push through, but I think I'm gonna have to tend to this tonight and give myself a break before I chop all these and blanch them. So maybe I'll see you guys back in the morning. I changed my mind. I'm pushing through. I want to be done. So I am actually what I did to adjust how much processing I have to do is I'm just raw packing these. I'm not going to blanch them first, which is fine. They're probably just not going to be as pretty like in the jar because I won't have gotten all the starch out, but that's fine by me. They'll be pretty once I cook them. And I got as good of a peel done as I could. And now as I'm chopping them in smaller pieces, I'm just going back to say, 
is there any more um, little bits that I need to get off. Man, I should know better. Don't ever cut towards yourself. That is like, and I, here I am doing it. <laughs> it's such a safety rule. And uh, I just put my thumb in the wrong spot or my finger. So let me get all these jars filled and I will come back and show you how much I ended up with. First year ever canning sweet potatoes. Hey, well, one of you call Todd in here and tell him to come and chop all these for me because he would be like a thousand times faster than I am. He's out working on the Jeep. So I don't know who it was, but thank you. Your call went through and Todd just walked in. Because I just asked them, will somebody please call Todd and ask him to come chop these? I was busy. <laughs> I know, I told them that. I was out um, giving my beast their mite treatment. Oh, I said you were working on the Jeep. Well, I moved the Jeep so I could get the four-wheeler out oh. to go work on the bees. And then the Jeep stalled in the backyard and I couldn't get it started. But I used the four-wheeler with the hitch on the front of the Jeep and just pulled it right back around. Nice. Got too big? No, it's fine. Oh, what goes in them? Just salt and water. Oh, that's it? Mm -hmm. Even I could do that. Yeah. I guessed at the beginning that I was going to get, I hoped, seven quarts. No, I think at the beginning I said five, quart, five quarts and two pints. But I misjudged. So now I have a new baseline for a new vegetable that I'm growing. One stainless steel bowl might give me two canner loads. Just cool. So I've gone through and added a uh, half a teaspoon or so of salt to each jar. I really don't make sure I salt my foods when I can them. But, um, I don't know, maybe I figure the salt might bring out a little bit of that extra sweetness in the sweet potatoes. And I ended up with 14 quarts, actually almost 15. Well, I probably would have 15, I forgot to, whoops, peel this one. Um, but we will use, I can only fit 14 quarts in my canner, so we'll use this jar this weekend just for dinner or something. So I'm really happy with that to know that one stainless steel bowl of scrubbed sweet potatoes will give me a canner load full of sweet potatoes. Alrighty guys, I ended up with the 14 quarts, half of a quart left that we can just dice up and use for like a breakfast hash or on a roast it with some other vegetables for dinner this weekend. I did add about a half a teaspoon of salt to each jar and then just filled, topped them off with boiling water, leaving a full inch of head space. And it's super simple. I need to look it up and double check, but I'm almost positive quarts are gonna go 90 minutes. So did this cure my carbohydrate mad addiction that I really wanna take advantage of because it's fall? Well, not exactly. When I was downstairs getting the jars, I saw my canned pumpkin and I told Todd, 
why I was canning the sweet potatoes, so maybe I didn't cave. And he's like, well, pumpkin bread sounds really good. So <laughs> I think we're still gonna make up some pumpkin bread this weekend. And I hope you guys are enjoying your harvest and your canning and your fall baking. And I'll end it here with how beautiful these sweet potatoes look coming out of the canner. Talk to you guys later.